Hi guys, this is SDJRSNF88 speaking with a tutorial on how to clean and maintain your locomotives. So one question I often get asked at model railway exhibitions while displaying my World War 1 Trench Railway Amiens 1918 is how do I keep the locomotives running smoothly? Now there are two answers to this question. First of all, regular track cleaning. This is done before and during a show. And second of all, and very importantly, is periodic locomotive maintenance, including oiling and wheel cleaning. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I keep my locomotives running in tip-top condition, showing you what oils I use and what wheel cleaners and other little tips and tricks I use to keep my locomotives running smoothly. So first of all, let's take a look at what oils I use. Now for this I use Hobby Lube, which is a part of the Woodland Scenics range, and they do a number of different oils and greases in uh, different grades, depending on what you're after. And I have uh, heard good feedback from a number of modellers, and of course my own personal experience with these lubricants. Um, so I highly recommend these. So what we got here is we've got two um, from the range. We got First of all, we got the uh, Premium Gear Lube, which is number HL664, and the Premium Light Oil HL662. Now, the Premium range is a more precision, uh, slightly more expensive oil. Uh, the reason I've gone for this is a number of the 009 models are, as you all know, are a bit more um, delicate than a number of the uh, 00 gauge equivalents. So I've decided that a finer grade oil would probably be better for these locomotives. So I've, I've gone with the extra cost. It was only a couple of pence and uh, bought these two lubricants here. Now, before you use these, I highly recommend reading the instructions uh, on each of your locomotives on what oil they should take. I've uh, noted in the mini trains uh, models uh, that it highly recommends using something like uh, watchmaker's oil, which is very, very similar to the grade of the light oil here uh, for the gears. So in this tutorial, I'll be using mainly just this one here, and this will be used on the gears and the bearings, which we'll take a closer look at uh, in a minute. Next up, we have a very handy and important tool, which is, of course, a wheel cleaner. Now, there are a number of different brands available including uh, Woodland Scenics do one for their Tidy Tracks range. Uh, there's also a number of precision, more expensive wheel cleaners. Uh, but the one I've gone for is uh, the Gauge Master uh, wheel cleaner here. Now these are available in 00 and N gauge. Uh, this is the N gauge one because 009 locomotives run on N gauge track. Uh, so this is perfect for the job. And what it is, it's got these little foam strips on here with a little uh, sort of interwoven uh, metal mesh which picks up electrical connection which means you could run the locomotive on there and the locomotive's wheels will spin, uh, thus rubbing the wheels against this sort of mesh and scraping off any uh, dirt and grease that's built up on the wheels. You see it's got these two little crocodile clips on here, so it could just be simply clipped onto the, your uh, track on your layout, so you can get the power from there, or of course you connect it to a controller. Another tool I highly recommend are these micro posable brushes. Now these are extremely handy for getting little bits of dirt and fluff out between the delicate places around the wheels and pickups. And they could be posed to any sort of position uh, so they could get right underneath the uh, wheels, right up to where the pickups are to and remove any debris that might cause any contact trouble uh, later on down the line. So my next tool is a bit of a random one. It is in fact a puffer bottle from a camera lens cleaning kit. Now this is an extremely handy tool indeed, especially for getting dust and bits of fluff out of hard to reach places in between the details on your model. I can't not recommend this thing enough. Now you can pick these up relatively cheaply from your uh, camera store or of course online and all you just do is you just simply squeeze the bottle here and you hear this little jet of air that comes out the nozzle there and that should dislodge any dust or um, fluff uh, on your models. Now I also use this for cleaning my track at shows, um, so if I go around with a rubber or another part of my track cleaning kit, um, rather than using a hoover to clear up the uh, debris left behind, I uh, just simply go along with this, give it a quick little blast and it should uh, clear any debris from the rails. And last but certainly not least, we have our locomotive cradle. Now this is a foam insert from one of my stock boxes. 
and as you can see it's one of those uh, pluck and pick um, cube foam tray so as you can see I've removed a few of the cubes up here and basically what I've done is I've removed a number of them to create a little shape in the top left here uh, which could be used as a loco cradle so this allows for some of the figures um, to sort of stand out of the cab but keep the locomotive safe and secure without damaging any of the fine detailed parts on the model. So without further ado let's get started. So the locomotive we're going to be performing a bit of work on today is the Mini Trains Snyder Locotractor, which is a regular performer on Amions. So the first thing we've got to do is pop it into the cradle. So as you can see, I've inserted uh, one of the cubes back in. Uh, this uh, shortens the gap, so it means that the loco tractor will fit in there nice and snugly. So first of all, we've got to gently flip the loco over, making sure not to catch any of the details. Apologies if my hand's in the way there. And then gently rest the locomotive like so in the cradle. Now that the locomotive is safely in the cradle, the first step is to go over with the fine uh, brush and just basically just check in and around the wheels and the pickups, making sure there is no fluff uh, from previous running sessions that could get locked or tied up in the wheels at a later date. Uh, some of you may know I had some trouble with my uh, Mini Trains Brigade lock where a build up of dirt got into one of the pickups and caused a lot of trouble later on down the line. So as you can see I've picked up quite a sizable little bit of fluff there uh, on, the end of the on the end of the brush there if the camera decides to focus on it. But that is the sort of thing we do not want inside the model so just remove that with your finger and then uh, go back in until you're perfectly satisfied that there's no other bits of debris locked in there that can potentially cause a lot of trouble later on down the line. So now all the debris has been removed from the gears, wheels and pickups, it's time to start oiling all the moving components on the model. So as mentioned, I'm going to be using the light oil um, from Hobby Lube, part of the Woodland Scenics range. And as mentioned in the Mini Trains uh, instructions, I'm only going to be using the light oil for both the gears and the moving components like the rods and cranks on the outside. Um, I'm guessing because the gears in these models are very, very finely strung, uh, as I found out with my Brigade lock. Uh, so I'm guessing that's the reason why they're using, uh, recommend you to use a really, really fine grade of oil. So anyway, as you can see, um, what's quite handy with Mini Trains models is all the little gears are exposed on the bottom, which makes it nice and easy for oiling access. So as you can see, underneath the cab, we've got the uh, worm drive. And the great thing about these hobby um, oils is they've got a precision little nozzle, so you can just get a little tiny drop inside right where you want it so there we go that's right in the worm there and that will basically hopefully when the models uh, does its little wheel clean in a minute uh, will then uh, move the oil around inside the gears in this little area here and then I'm going to pop a little tiny drop on the center one there and that should hopefully go between those gears there and then one in there and then finally one on the end there now it's very very important not to over oil your models uh, so I only oil um, as part of my cleaning routine every couple of shows um, after the model's been running for a fair few hours. So uh, since this model was last oiled, I've done uh, one or two exhibitions, including the Bristol Model Railway Exhibition, which was a three-day show. So the model's been running flat out over that weekend. Um, so it's in a bit of a need of an oil. So I thought it's time to do so. So yeah, now that all those gears are oiled, I'm now going to go around the outside of the model and make sure all the little mover components are also received their little droplet of oil too. So sometimes a bit too much oil might come out the nozzle. So uh, what I'm going to do here is using a spare one of those um, posable brushes, I'm just going to gently soak up any of the excess oil. 
as excess oil can pose problems for models uh, in the long run. So it will end up picking up more dirt uh, as it travels around the track, which would then potentially wear down the bearing and also make it harder to clean in the future. So just gently absorbing um, leftover uh, fluid there, and that is all looking good. So now that the locomotive has all been oiled up, it's now time to get it on the wheel cleaner and give it a good run in, which will of course uh, run the oil uh, around in all the gears and all the bearings, but at the same time uh, clean the wheels. So as you can see, I've set up the Gauge Master wheel cleaner. And by this, I've just put a little bit of test track here, which I've wired to my controller, uh, connected the crocodile clips to that section of the track. Of course, that section of the track can be your layout, so ordinarily I would use the fiddle yard on Amions. And then what we've got to do is just finally pop the locomotive on the actual wheel cleaner itself. And it should just slot around uh, the plastic flanges on the uh, centre of the uh, um, cleaner itself. And then all we just have to do is apply a bit of power. As you can see, the locomotive gently moves along the cleaner. And the great thing about this cleaner is I use a little uh, block at the end as sort of a buffer stop. And you can see the model runs right up to it and you can see the wheels are just turning there. And what they are doing is they're gently rubbing up against the, uh, the cleaning material, which is gently removing the dirt from the wheels with each rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the model there running for a couple of, uh, a couple of minutes or so. Uh, this will remove any of the excess dirt from the wheels and at the same time allow the oil that I've recently put on the model to circulate around all the gears and all the bearings, uh, oiling the model up nicely. So once the model's had a couple of minutes on the wheel cleaner, it's now time to give the bodywork a bit of a clean. So I've got my handy puffer bottle to hand, and all I'm just going to do is just simply give it a quick blast over the bodywork. And as you can see, it's dislodging any little bits of dust and fluff that has built up on the model over its previous runs. And of course, while we've been rolling it around in the cradle and other bits and pieces, and this should hopefully blast it all away from the... Uh, gears and anything that's now hidden underneath the model and as you can see the body works coming up quite nicely and there we go we have one clean model ready for action at its next exhibition so there you have it my tutorial on how to clean and maintain your locomotives and I hope you found it of interest I really enjoyed doing this video as I've been meaning to do this tutorial for quite a while now uh, so I hope it was of help of course, there are a number of other different ways you can maintain uh, your locomotives, uh, but this is my own personal choice, and I think this one works uh, the best for me. So let me know what you think in the uh, comments below. So I guess that's all that's left for me to say is uh, this has been SDJ Arsenef, 88 speaking, and thanks for watching.